Hi, this is Michael. I am the CEO and founder of Domain Magnate, a small private equity firm. And we acquire and operate a portfolio of content websites. So on this chat with Prosper, I'm going to talk about buying, selling content websites, growing them, and my career of doing that over the past couple of decades. Hope you enjoy. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the domain magnet himself, Michael Berislavsky. Michael, how are you today? Hi, Prosper. I'm very good. Nice to be here. Fantastic. Now, viewers, um, if you're watching this right now, you would understand that we are always bringing you experts in their fields. And Michael is the founder and CEO of a website called DomainMagnet.com. Now, he's been building, buying and selling established websites since 2004. And they basically are a micro private equity firm where they buy established businesses under $1 million dollars mainly in the content um, site and uh, SaaS sphere. Now, I've brought Mike to tell us a little bit about what is it that he does and how he actually helps sellers exit their businesses quickly and, and efficiently while also allowing investors an opportunity to invest um, you know, in these types of business. Now, Michael, tell us a little bit about how you got started and um, you know, what it is that you do in your business. Yeah, sure. So I got started uh, close to two decades ago, around 2004. And um, I was just a poor college student and I was looking to see if I can make some money online. Uh, I've, I've heard somewhere that, that you could make money online. And then I asked all my friends and of course my parents and they said, it's just not real. Like if you can't make any money online, that was 2004. Um, but somehow I, I came across uh, uh, affiliate marketing and I built a few websites. I was promoting a few affiliate programs and I learned SEO and, and my website started to get some traffic. I was starting to make money. And then as I made some first uh, revenues, I was looking to reinvest the money. And, and that's how I came across buying websites. And it was amazing. You could just, instead of going and building a new site from scratch and then working on it for like a year until it brings some decent profits, uh, I realized that I could just go and buy an established websites. And, and there were some really good deals available at the time and I could buy and I could see right away what, what can be fixed, what can be improved, how to grow it. And that's what I've been doing ever since basically. And so what we do now and then I was starting out, I didn't have a lot of money. So I remember one of the first websites I acquired back in 2005 was for $120. And I was making like what, like $2 per month or so, <laughs> like $1 per month. And then I sold it a year later for uh, $2,500. So that was my first uh, website flip. <laughs> and so hundreds of deals later, what we do now is we set up with small funds. We call them group buys currently. We raise some capital from investors and typically investors put somewhere between like 50,000 and a couple hundred thousand dollars. And we go and buy either one or several uh, bigger content websites, typically around the mid six figure range, price range and higher. And then we have our team grow it, work on it, improve it and um, and then later we sell for a profit. And, yeah, and so that's, that's our main, main service. We also help people buy websites directly if they have a higher budget. So for the lower budget, it's basically, it's usually better to go join a fund that can buy a bigger site. And people with higher budget, we also assist them to buy websites. And additionally, we, we manage a portfolio of our own websites and occasionally do some, some consulting for for other bigger private equity firms and on acquisitions. And we aim to, we generally try to buy deals directly. So we often work with sellers directly. So we have a lot of people who wanna sell their websites coming to us and asking, um, do you wanna buy my site? And, and then we would be able to, to see if it fits and acquire it directly so that it saves them the, 
the brokerage field. Absolutely. That's uh, quite an interesting journey. I mean, coming from a hundred and fifty dollars in a flip to actually starting to sell uh, and buy six figure uh, sites. Now you've got a particular genre of website that you go for, which is the content uh, site. Tell us a little bit about why you go for sites like that. And um, what do you sort of look for in a content site? Yeah, sure. So I've, I've actually bought all kinds of different sites and businesses over time. I think I've pretty much had um, like all types of businesses at some point or another. I had some, some e-commerce businesses. I even had some adult businesses at some point and some, some things that were that I probably should have mentioned. <laughs> and, and, and also, um, and kind of like, and, and had all, all kinds of forums and communities and like, popular social channels with millions of followers. And, uh, but after trying many, many different things, I've, I've came back to just good old SEO and content that, that seemed to work the best for us. And it's also kind of easier. And I think it's one of the best areas really to focus on in that price range. Like if you have, if you're looking at a bigger price range, you might want to start looking at maybe e-commerce businesses and others, but at that price range, I think content businesses provide the best trade-off between um, sort of opportunity and risk. Okay, so for our audience that are probably just scratching their heads, wondering if their site is a content site or not a content content site, could you just define what a content site is, and um, you know how can you spot one if you come across it on the internet? So a content site is, is a website that its primary method of getting traffic is through publishing content. Uh, and that could be all kinds of content. It could be, con it could be many, many different articles, guides on like how to use Zoom, for example, or it can be different articles that compare um, some items you can buy, like the best, what is the best laptop under $200, something like that. It could be kind of an encyclopedia type website that has a lot of very in-depth content about various topics. So anything that's content, it could also be a website that sells content such as sells eBooks. So uh, uh, to sum it up, prim the, the primary method of getting traffic is for content and also through SEO. So most of the traffic on these sites is organic traffic from Google. And, um, and so the way this kind of business works is people write articles, they, they research topics, they write articles, and then these articles start getting traffic from Google. And then the website is typically monetized through, through ads, like Google AdSense or affiliate programs, for example, Amazon Associates, and sometimes by selling uh, digital products. Uh, so this is in comparison to, for example, an e-commerce business where you primarily uh, sell physical products. Absolutely. Now that sort of differentiates, um, and most of us embark on creating content websites. So this would be the type of sites that you can, um, you know, uh, take from them because, you know, people come to the internet to get information. And if your website is the one providing that content, then obviously people get to know, like, and trust you. And we all understand that people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. Now you went on a journey. I mean, obviously you started off with that $150 flip and now you are working with sort of bigger websites. What sort of um, you know, lessons have you gathered along your journey um, to now have a successful business, um, you know, right from the time that you started? Well, you know, Prosper, the interesting thing is that uh, now we buy websites around half a million dollars price range. And what I've learned is that it's not such a big difference as you might think between a, a website uh, that costs $150 and $500,000. Of course, the numbers look different. Uh, there is, of course, a longer process. There is some more things involved. But, but the general kind of the general business structure is pretty similar. You have content, you have articles, you write articles, you check if the articles are good quality, you maybe build some backlinks to improve the Google rankings, you have traffic, you monetize the traffic. So all those different aspects of understanding 
uh, how the business works, um, what are some risks and what are some opportunities are pretty much the same. So it's very interesting because it's a pretty universal set of skills that really applies throughout a wide range of, uh, of price ranges. And so that, that I would say is one thing. The other thing is it's really interesting to see how the industry has evolved now back when I was starting out 2004, 2005, uh, all the way through like 2010 or so, the prices were really low. You could have bought a website for just about 10 times the monthly revenue uh, and sometimes even less. So that means if there is a website that's earning uh, $1,000 per month in ad revenue, you could have expected to buy it back in 2010 for just about $10,000. And over the past five or 10 years, the prices have really increased quite a bit and they've gone up to an average of about 40 times the monthly revenue. And uh, over the past six months, actually for the first time, the prices have dropped. So now it's down to somewhere close to 35 times the monthly revenue. And now it seems more or less stable at that range. So it's been interesting to see how the market has really evolved. When I was starting out, uh, there were no marketplaces, no brokers. There were just forums and uh, chat rooms, and that's how you would try to find deals. And now it's a lot more evolved, much bigger. And there is many, many fairly large companies that provide these different brokerage services. So it's been interesting to watch. Absolutely. So most of the people that we work with are coaches and consultants that would be within the sort of realm of content creators um, that will maybe would look for some sort of an exit. And one of the things that you do is help people to quickly and efficiently exit a business. Now, let's say Sally is watching this show right now, Michael, and is thinking, oh, wait a minute, I've got a site that I've just been adding content on. And I would maybe like to um, exit out of it and then maybe start on in a new venture. What are the things that they should do to get their site ready so that you can actually start looking at it and look um, you know, for prospective uh, buyers for it? Yeah, sure. So first of all, just to clarify, we don't actually do uh, seller site brokerage meaning that we don't work for sellers to help them sell their sites. We only represent buyers in our deals to avoid any conflicts of interest. But we, we often have many, many sellers coming to us. So we sometimes just give them some advice on, on what to do, how to sell it. And very often we've seen that they, uh, they don't know really what to do and, and, and they might talk to a broker and the broker just says, well, say, sign this here and go list with us. And we just give them some quick advice, you know, improve here, improve there, and then come back in three months or six months. And, and that's often what happens. Uh, so the biggest thing, the biggest advice I would give is get your numbers in order. Uh, I found that a lot of people just don't know, even at that range, businesses that are somewhere in the mid six figure price range, people just don't know their numbers. Uh, we've had so many, um, so many clients, so many uh, sellers, that just said like, oh, my website earns $30,000 per month. But then once we started looking at the numbers, it turns out it's close to 10,000. Uh, and in some cases it wasn't even profitable. So people have no idea how much they're actually earning until they really start looking at the numbers and getting everything together and putting on a spreadsheet. So that's certainly the third step, get your p &Ls in order. And uh, the second step also is make sure to remove yourself as the owner, because maybe what happens is you are managing everything. You are managing the advertisers, you are managing the, the content and so on. And it would be difficult to sell because the buyer would look at the business, would look at the website and be like, um, how would I manage it? I don't know what to do. And it looks like you've been doing everything for five years. And, uh, and now if you sell it, you will discontinue that. And I don't know what to do. So what you would want to do is to create uh, either hire a writer, hire some people who can manage the website instead of you, and, and or also create some manuals, some, some SOPs, some directions on what to do, how to manage the website, because that will really increase the value in, um, in the eyes of the buyer as they would see if this is an established business, it's not just some kind of website 
run by a random person, something that really has more of this corridors of an established business. Oh, absolutely. You just reminded me of the e-myth um, by your namesake, Michael Gabler, who is basically <laughs> talking about if you really want to run a business that's profitable and um, enjoyable, you need to make sure that obviously it's becomes an enterprise that works um, independent of the business owner um, and it can be pumped on to somebody else. So what you're saying is if you really want to then on sell that business, it has to be in a position that somebody can literally uh, come and turn the key and uh, be able to, you know, function with it there. Now, you did mention that you represent the buyer most of all. What are the things that a buyer who is looking to acquire for maybe to grow their uh, business, what are the things they should look out for, um, you know, when they're looking at a, a deal to purchase um, a website or another sort of uh, uh, business? Yeah, that's a good question. So we've seen actually a wide range of, of, of things people look at, generally based on their level of experience. So people who might not be very experienced in acquisitions they would they would be looking at uh, I'd kind of the web de the design of how things look of the uh, the the niche the industry kind of I'm trying to understand the trends and uh, we've seen there is like a really big difference between how people approach due diligence based on their experience and, and what we look at or what what other professionals would look at is kind of a very there's a very clear uh, like a very clear criteria that you would want to see. First of all, you would want to see the PL. The, you want to see the revenue, so the expenses and divided by sources. Quite often people don't really know. They might know their revenues, but they don't know exactly which, which revenues goes to which site if they have several and which affiliate program uh, uh, earns like more money and so on. So that's very important always. So the first thing we would look at is the PL. The second thing we would look at is the rankings. We would generally get access to Google Analytics, Google Search Console, uh, use tools like Ahrefs and several others where you can see the rankings, the trends and so on. Uh, and, and then assuming that this goes well, and of course the price, uh, because again, often people have unrealistic price expectations. So it's important to know right today that the price is reasonable within the market price range. And then there's the next step as we go deeper into our due diligence, we start looking at what are some opportunities? How can we grow this business? How can we expand the website? And what are some risks? Uh, and there is also quite a few different uh, risks that, that you should be aware of when you're looking at, at content websites as well. And, uh, and that's it. And, and our due diligence goes uh, incrementally in that way by looking at the numbers, the risks and opportunities. Absolutely. That's um, obviously whenever you're making an investment deal, you need to make sure that you've got all your bases covered. Now, Michael, we could go on and on. This is like, um, you know, a, 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 an endless topic. What is the best way that people that are looking to maybe uh, invest um, or looking for opportunities to invest and they might need to speak to an expert like yourself? What will be the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, sure. Um, well, one more thing I want to mention is that uh, the interesting thing about this business is there is also this kind of a mix of really doing the due diligence and also a gut feeling. So for me personally, for example, when I look at a deal, I generally just know right away if it's something interesting or not. Like I'm still going to go through and do all the due diligence and all the process, but I kind of know and most of the time that initial gut feeling is, is right. Uh, so that's really interesting. And, and that's something that people um, might not have right away once we start looking at buying a website, but they quickly develop it as we look at a few deals. And that's really important. Uh, so yeah, people are welcome to reach out. Uh, check out our podcast called The Domain Magnet Show, where we talk to people, other people in the industry who buy, sell, manage, operate portfolios of content websites. And um, um, go to domainmagnet.com to see some of our services for investors, buyers, and sellers. Absolutely. I really enjoyed, um, you know, having you on the call today, Michael, because obviously your 
topic um, is, is, is quite an interesting one, especially for people that are getting started in business. Like you mentioned, sometimes you don't necessarily have to start from scratch. You can literally uh, buy a business that's already uh, fully functional and you can even start receiving profit from uh, day one there. So what, what sort of um, last remarks do you have um, you know, for people that are arming and ahhing, sitting on the fence and don't quite know, should I go into buy a business or, you know, they may be afraid that they might not be uh, able to then handle either the growth or whatever comes along with the purchase of a business. I mean, given the fact that the recent acquisition that we know is Twitter with Elon Musk, who goes in with the sink and then. Uh, fires almost all the staff that are, um, you know, working within the business. What 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 sort of um, um, words do you have for for people that want to grow by acquisition? Yeah, I would say don't don't do what Elon Musk does. Start small. <laughs> uh, if this is the first purchase, don't don't aim for Twitter. Go and buy a smaller website. You can just uh, see what what kind of money you have that you are perfectly okay losing like a thousand dollars and you can just see that as a learning uh, opportunity and go buy a small website and you'll very quickly learn how to manage it how to operate it everything that you need to know and, and once you feel comfortable with all that and you've seen that you can actually grow and improve the website increase its value then it's good time to think about uh, doing a bigger deal Absolutely. I really appreciate your time. Now, if you're watching this show right now, you can appreciate that Mike, um, Michael helps sellers exit their businesses quickly and efficiently and actually allows investors an opportunity to invest in this new industry of online businesses and revenue website. It's like the real estate, uh, but just online. Okay. So you stand a chance to yield high potential, um, you know, and high returns through a reputable and experienced firm. Now, Michael, I can't thank you enough for the time that you've taken to uh, enlighten us about the stuff that you do there at Domain Magnet. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prosper. Good to chat with you.